Hey guys, Karsh from OneTap. So today I'll be showing you how to do check-ins on the kiosk. So kiosk is pretty cool because um, you can turn any iPad that's like lying around uh, into a, a self-check-in kiosk, similar to those kiosks that you see at the airport where you're asked to like type in you know, your name or maybe you scan your passport or provide some information like a code or something to identify yourself and continue the check-in process. The same thing that you see at offices where you go and type in your name, register as a guest and check in. OneTap will do that and it's pretty cool that it works with mostly any iPad as long as it's running the most recent versions of iOS. So you want to check out our help desk articles to see what version we support and uh, yeah, get the right iPad. So if the iPad's lying around, so here's how we here's how we get started. As soon as you, you first want to download the OneTap check-in admin app. So as soon as you type in OneTap app, you're going to see that right here and it's going to be like OneTap check-in on the app store. So download that on your iPad. Uh, make sure that the version, well, the version should just be the latest version. Uh, if you're on the, if you're on a iOS 7, uh, as of right now, as of the video recording, iPad OS 17 or later. As soon as you come in here, log into your account, you're gonna see two options, kiosk or behind the desk mode. We're gonna go to the kiosk and by default, uh, it, pretty much everything just works. You don't have to do anything. So as soon as you click on the search bar here, it's gonna show you all the names of people that you imported. So where does that come from? It comes from the Profiles tab. Go to the Profiles tab, you can drag and drop an Excel sheet and it will populate all the names from that Excel sheet, including the different columns and all the details and stuff. So you can also create a new profile right here. So I can create a new profile, like for example, Laura J. And uh, it will create the profile right here, simple as that. And we can also do, we can also import from other apps and use APIs and all that, but that's a little bit more advanced uh, the stuff that we're not gonna cover in this video. And as soon as we click on the search bar right here, we're gonna start to see all the names of the profiles on our database. So I just created Laura J, I'm gonna see that right here. And I'm gonna click on, for example, Laura right here. I'm gonna hit, uh, I'm gonna see all the classes that are all the lists that are going on today. So by default, uh, lists, remember, represent like basically a class, a course, basically one meeting session, right? Or an event, et cetera. So I have like these ones that are going on today. So I'm gonna, for example, hit the glass bowling, st glass bowling studio, hit the register and check in. Easy as that, I've checked in and then I hit done and it's over. So now if I go back into the glass blowing studio, I'm gonna see that like Laura has checked in. So you can also check in with codes. That's also pretty cool. So people can like enter their code and they can find themselves. You don't have to do it by name. Uh, the process is pretty simple. Now let's go into some of the more complicated settings that let's just say settings that make it more customized and make the kiosk more powerful. So starting off with the list. So you know how we were asked to select which list we want to check into from all the lists that are coming up today? We can say, uh, we can pin it to a specific list. So we could be like, hey, it's for a graphic, you know, it's for an art class that's going on today. This is a recurring list, but it's only for today's day. Recurring lists, just to summarize here, are like, you know, kind of classes that can have a schedule and we automatically create a new list for each day based on the schedule. You see art class here and you see the today's date on it. Now, we hit the done button, and then now if I go over here and if I want to check in, let's just say Caleb, find the name from here, and hit register and check in. I'm not asked to choose from any lists that are, you know, lists that are coming up. I'm just asked to choose, you know, just to check in on that one list. And then I hit the done button, that's it. So we've checked in. We can also register people here on this kiosk. We can also turn that on or off by going over to the settings menu. And there's an option here to basically turn on the registrations and turn off the registrations. To turn, uh, to turn the registration on or off, you want to go up here to the who can check in and you want to say registered visitors only. That will only let people who are already in the database, uh, you know, check in. So it'll get rid of that register button. As we see right here, it's gone. And if you turn it on to only registrations, which means you don't want existing people checking in, only new people signing up, you put it to that and then it will bring up the registration form by default. Now, to give you an example, by default, we're just gonna keep it uh, to everyone. So new and existing people can check in. So I'm just gonna type in a name right here. Stephanie, and then hit register. And these are all the custom fields that can be customized. Um, as an example right here, I have some custom fields on my account, so I'm gonna put those right here. The, these are all optional. And you can customize this entire registration form by going over to this screen right here and hitting these settings and you can customize the registration form right here with the different custom fields and all that. So if you don't wanna have all those, just wanna have name, you can do that right here too. Name is required and then the photo can just be optional so we can also take a photo. 
So simple as that. So now um, let's go into a few, few, few other registration settings. So you've, uh, you can also scan QR code passes, and this is a public QR code. If you scan this, you'll be taken to the public check-in link. That's the same check-in link that's available if you click on this and you, hit, you do share check-in link. It's the same public QR code and the same link that can be scanned, okay? And the, the visitor completes the process on their phone. So that's different. That doesn't happen on the kiosk, but they can scan it from there. And this is the page that the visitor would see on their phone and they would complete the check-in process. So we can get rid of those stuff by going over to settings and we can go over to this check-in options right here and we can get rid of it. So we can say, we don't want the public QR code. Uh, the pass scanner is pretty cool because it will scan private QR code passes. So that's not this QR code. That's actually a pass that's given to each unique person when you create a profile for them. So as soon as you create a profile, you get a pass. So for example, Brown's pass, and then you click on this, it'll bring up the camera, scan it, and it skips that whole process of finding and finding the name. It directly will take them to the page where they shows their profile and they can show them. Now, uh, to turn that off, you just go to settings right here, and then you hit the check-in options, and you can say search by, uh, so uh, we can do yeah, kiosk scanner off, just say search by name for right now, and then we're not going to see the code. We're just going to scan right here. We're going to see a pretty empty kiosk. So you can also do check-ins with the, you know, the, with, so with an ID number. Um, so for example, I'm going to give Anthony an ID number of like, for example, 100. Uh, 100. And if I go over here to the settings, and if I go over to search by check-in code, I'm going to get rid of names. So now I'm only trying to do check-ins based on the code. So, uh, uh, for example, maybe I don't want anyone, you know, I don't want other people to see, uh, you know, we don't want people to see each other's names and all that for privacy reasons. Uh, we can always, like, for example, in the search results, we can just say uh, only matching the, you know, for example, the search results. That way, like, you know, it's not everyone that's just showing up. So now if I go over here and if I do enter check-in code, uh, I'm going to type in 100, and that's going to be Anthony's code, uh, 111. So like, as soon as I click on that, I can check in as Anthony. So that's how the check-in code was code is gonna work. Um, the, after that, for example, if I wanna just do, yeah, leave it at name, not by code, continue forward. We can see that, for example, we can allow uh, group check-ins. So like people can check in, multiple people can check in together. And then we also have the pin here. So we can set a kiosk pin right here. So we can set it to, for example, like we can set a pin number, for example, 100. And what that does is like, that prevents the, person from exiting the kiosk. So it's gonna ask you for the pin. If you enter the pin, then only you can continue. Otherwise it's gonna block you right there. Now there's a few other things, for example, like the timer. So how long, for example, the kiosk is, uh, like how long those screens stay up, like those screens where you're asked to, you know, confirm the name and all that. Um, and then there's gonna disable auto sleep. So that's just to prevent the iPad from automatically going to sleep. Yeah. So now if we go over here and if we, for example, click on uh, Emily, and if I do a check-in, so we got the confirmation screen that shows up. We can customize all these messages. We can also customize the MySA message in like the title right here too. So let's cover um, how to do that. So you go to customizations and you can, for example, like change this value right here. So please, for example, like uh, good morning, for example. We're gonna click on the description here. So please fill out the Please continue below. And we're gonna, we can remove a logo. We can add a new logo um, into the kiosk. We can also select like, for example, like the fill and all that, and then the check-in information. So like, this is the information that's like related to check-in. So for example, like we can say something like, instead of description, we can leave the description empty. And we can just like say, uh, okay, let's just say in the description, we wanna say, let's check you in. Uh, we are uh, busy today, um, so please bear with us. And in the information right here, this is more like checking information instructions and stuff. So it's like, uh, yeah, for example, like please fill out the form. Then uh, you will be called. So this is an example of a self check-in and then the background color and all that, you can just like, you know, for example, change it. So you can, for example, change the background color to, let's just say, for example, you just want to make it like a little bit, like a little bit like, like gray. Um, or maybe let's just say you want to do like an inverse, like you just want to literally change the whole color to like something else and change it to like black. 
for example, you can really kind of like make a kiosk like a dark, dark theme mode and change like the text right here to like white, for example. Kiosk button color. So let's just say, yeah, we're gonna like leave it at blue. And then uh, the disclaimer, you can add more like disclaimers and stuff like that here. You can say, hey, by visiting the business, we agree to our terms and conditions. That's something that, you know, that's common that people put in there. On the registration form, uh, you can also add the disclaimer over there as well. And then the confirmation message, you can say something like, thanks for checking in. I hope you we hope to serve you soon. Thanks for thanks for checking in. We, we will be with you very shortly. With, with you very shortly. And what you can do is you can um, you can also set the message timer. So you can say, hey, maybe I want to I wanted to be there for 10 seconds. And then you just hit the done button and that's it. So like, see, like right here, we'll say, um, let's check you in. We'll say, hey, we're busy today. Please be patient while we process everyone. And then please fill out the form and then you will be called. This is the check-in instruction. And if I put this in like light theme, it's probably going to be a little bit better for us to see all this stuff. So if I just do a reset right here, change the text color to... For example, like black, or like let's just say, for example, like green, I like look pretty good. And yeah, so basically, yeah, that's just how you do it. You can change the logo and all that too. And then the disclaimers right here, uh, the, so the disclaimers here as well. And then the registration form is all, it can also have a disclaimer text that we can kind of customize by going to the settings and customization right here. So I just added one right now. It says by registering below, you're agreeing to our terms and conditions or privacy policy and that can be found right here in the settings, customization, disclaimer, and the register button uh, or the register section. Yeah, and uh, so pretty much um, simple as that. One tap will, uh, it's pretty easy to customize this whole kiosk, uh, have a check-in process with code. And to check out, you just do the same thing that you do to check in. So for example, like right here, if I want to check in, check out uh, Caleb. So I'm going to go into Caleb. First, I'm going to do a check-in on that list and see here's the confirmation message and then we hit the done button and now if I go back settings and if I go back over to sorry if I go back into Caleb again i am be able to customize this so into Caleb sorry if I go to check out I should be able to check out right now Caleb. so as easy as that and then we were doing all these check-ins on this list so if I go to settings you can see the list culinary class August 27th so if I go over to lists right here culinary class, August 27th. I can see that all these check-ins are taking place. And this is where the data is recorded. So Emily checked in, you know, checked in, checked out the time elapsed right here. Uh, pretty, pretty cool, pretty useful. Few other, one other privacy setting that I wanna cover right here is that if you go over to profile search results and for example, right here, you got different options. So for sometimes for privacy reasons, people don't want, to see, uh, uh, you know, uh, people don't want, uh, people don't want visitors to see each other's names and stuff. Um, so as an example right here, for example, um, if you type in, for example, like, let's just say, for example, you don't, you don't want, for example, other people, like you don't want to, you don't want a visitor seeing other people's names. So let's just take Caleb as an example, right? I'm going to set it to match exact search query. And if you go over here and if you do a search, so, and if you type in C-A-L-E-B, you're only going to see, like, if you type in C-A-L, you're not going to see other people. Uh, if you type in exactly Caleb, that's when Caleb's name is going to come up. And then like the same thing for uh, Johnson, for example, you want it to be exact. And then you can also make it a little bit flexible too. For example, like maybe we got John and we got Johnson, right? So maybe we got J-O, so you got like a few people with, yeah, John and Johnson. So if you do want to be a little bit flexible here, so like it doesn't, they don't have to exactly search for the name, you can always go over here and you can always say match part search query. And then you can type